Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. I am Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture on accommodation and today we are discussing the various anomalies of accommodation. Duke and Elder basically classified accommodation anomalies into two broad categories. So we have the anomalies arising because of excessive accommodation and we have anomalies arising because of diminished or deficient accommodation. On one side you have excessive accommodation and spasm of accommodation and on the other side we have physiological diminution of accommodation which is seen in press biopia, pharmacological decrease in accommodation which is seen when we take some cycloplegic drugs like atropine or homatropine uh, resulting in cycloplegia or it could be pathologically diminished accommodation. Here under the pathological decreased accommodation we have four accommodative anomalies. Number one is accommodation insufficiency. Number two is ill-sustained accommodation. Then we have accommodative inertia and accommodative paralysis. First of all, let's talk about the insufficiency of accommodation. So what is insufficiency of accommodation? The accommodative power here is less than the normal physiological limits for that patient's age. So that is the key word. It is less than the normal physiological limits for that particular age group. Now this should not be confused with press biopia where the insufficiency is age appropriate. Now, how do you basically find out the expected amplitude of accommodation for that particular age? We have to use the Hofstetter's formula. The Hofstetter's formula is 15 minus 0 0.25 into age of the patient. So, for example, if the patient's age is about 14 years, the expected amplitude would be around 11.5 diopters. And if the patient has, say, for example, eight diopters of accommodative amplitude left, now this indicates that this patient at the age of 14 years has insufficient accommodation. Now, what causes insufficiency of accommodation? It could be because of premature sclerosis of the lens or it could be due to causes either systemic or local causes which can cause weakness of the ciliary muscle. Now here, this could be because of debilitating illness, fever, anemia, fatigue, even malnutrition, diabetes, toxemia, pregnancy, and even stress. All these conditions can affect the ciliary muscle, leading to deficient or insufficient accommodation. Also, weakness of the ciliary muscle could be because of increased pressures as seen in primary open angle glaucoma, or it could be seen in ocular inflammatory conditions, which can affect the ciliary body. For example, sympathetic ophthalmia onset. As a matter of fact, in sympathetic, in sympathetic ophthalmia, we have this one symptom that patients present with, and that is difficulty in neovision task. So what are the various clinical features? As expected, the patient is going to have visual symptoms associated with the near work. So they will have difficulty in maintaining clear focus and really going to struggle with reading or close-up tasks. And as the accommodation is less, they are going to put more effort and that is going to lead to eye strain and discomfort and sometimes even headache, fatigue and irritation due to sustained accommodative effort. Now, accommodation and convergence issues go hand in hand because we know that it's actually a synergistic process. With accommodation, we have convergence and that also stimulates, uh, that also constricts the pupil leading to meiosis. So here also you might have convergence issues and such patients are going to have intermittent diplopia while carrying out near work task. Okay. Apart from that, there might be associated symptoms like heaviness of the eyelid. Now, this is basically the eye fatigue only. And also, let's talk about the stability and progression of these symptoms. Now, if the patient has this accommodative insufficiency due to lenticular sclerosis or cataract, then the symptoms are going to be pretty much stable. However, if it is because of the ciliary muscle weakness, like in systemic causes, say, a fever or any illness, then the symptoms are going to be variable. And this is going to depend upon the uh, status of the ciliary muscle. 
Now, what about the, uh, the test results? So, when we carry out various accommodative tests in these patients, so we talk about this uh, accommodative test in our previous videos, so you can visit those videos. So, here in accommodative insufficiency, you will find that the amplitude of accommodation would be low. Also, the near point of accommodation would be receded. In monocular or binocular accommodative facility tests, you will find that the patient has difficulty in clearing the minus lenses. Why is that so? Because minus lenses stimulate accommodation and they have some sort of problem with accommodation and therefore they have difficulty in clearing the minus lenses. When we talk about the negative relative amplitude of accommodation, here it appears high and the patient is going to actually accept high plus lenses. Now, why does that happen? Now, the NRA or the negative relative uh, amplitude of accommodation basically represents the limit of relaxing accommodation before the patient experiences blur. And here we will sequentially introduce plus lenses or the plus powers. Now in accommodation insufficiency, since a patient already is under accommodating, they can accept more plus powers before noticing a blur making it seem like they have an excessive high, excessively high NRA. It's more of a relative excess rather than a true overactive response. However, when we talk about the positive relative amplitude of accommodation, now this is basically about how much uh, minus lenses you can add before the patient experiences a blur. So this test how much you can stimulate the accommodation in this patient. So since these patients have difficulty in stimulating accommodation and low amplitude of accommodation, even the positive relative amplitude of accommodation is going to be low in these cases. So that is something important. They will have difficulty in clearing the minus lenses and their PRA values will be less than minus 1.75 diopters. Now what about monocular estimation method? In monocular estimation methods, again, since the accommodation is affected or since the accommodation is less in these patients, you are going to see that they will uh, have this with motion or with movement and this indicates lag of accommodation. So this diagram basically over here uh, uh, is the summary of all the test results that you're going to see in accommodative insufficiency. So low amplitude of accommodation, difficulty in clearing the minus lenses in accommodative facility test, lag of accommodation with motion seen in MEM retinoscopy, PRA will be reduced, NRA appears excessive. Very important. All right. Now that we have understood what causes accommodation insufficiency and how do we interpret, interpret the various results, let's talk about the treatment of accommodation insufficiency. Now, since it's associated with so many underlying conditions, the primary treatment would be addressing the systemic cause of ciliary muscle weakness. Also, we need to do appropriate refractive correction. These patients are going to have symptoms with near task and therefore you can prescribe near vision spectacles in the form of plus lenses to aid in the near work. The funda here is that you have to use the weakest convex lens that provides significant improvement. So you are just prescribing these plus lenses to basically help the patients with their symptoms. We don't want the patients to become dependent on these plus lenses. We also want to them to improve their accommodation and that happens basically with accommodative exercises. So these accommodative exercises are going to aid recovery once the underlying debility is resolved. So the main treatment here is addressing the systemic cause and then prescribing the refractive correction, near vision aids and accommodative exercises. There is a link between myopia and accommodation insufficiency. In myopia, usually, the power of the eye is increased, either in the form of corneal myopia or lenticular myopia. Now, since the power of the eye is more, the patient has less and less need to accommodate. And this results in development of accommodative insufficiency. And therefore, when we are treating myopia, you have to make sure that you give them full correction in the form of minus glasses. Any sort of undercorrection is going to worsen the accommodative fatigue by forcing more effort at near. Apart from that, you can also consider giving them plus addition glasses for near. And these plus lenses basically is a temporary way to relieve the symptoms. With time, you're going to slowly bring the plus lenses down to normal. So that is one important point that we must remember. 
So we talked about the accommodative exercises. Let's see what all accommodative exercises could be prescribed to these patients. The patients can do flipper lens associated exercises using a plus two or minus two diopter lenses or customized lenses. And this is going to help them in improving their accommodative facility. We have previous videos on accommodation facility or accommodative facility. Now, also push-up accommodation exercises can also strengthen accommodation. And one more exercise is the heart chart exercise, which basically enhances the accommodative facility and amplitude. The first picture here depicts the push-up exercise. So here the patient holds a pencil and they try to focus the tip of the pencil and they try to bring that pencil into one single vision object. Now, slowly, the pencil is moved closer to the patient's eye till they experience blurring of the tip of the pencil. Once the tip of pencil appears double, they try to make it, uh, they try to basically again push the pencil far away till it appears single. So this is basically repeated again and again and this basically strengthens the patient amplitude of accommodation. Then we have the heart chart test. Here the patient holds a near chart like this and there's a distance chart present on the wall. And the, what the patient does is they will uh, alternatively focus on the letters on the near chart and on the far chart. Apart from that, lifestyle modifications like employing the 20-20-20 rule is important. After every 20 minutes, they must take a 20 second break and look at something 20 feet away. Also, ensuring that there is proper lighting and ergonomic positioning and also it's important to reduce prolonged near work tasks without any breaks. Alright, so we talked about the accommodation insufficiency. Now let's talk about ill-sustained accommodation. So what is ill-sustained accommodation? Here, important is that the amplitude of accommodation is normal, but it will fatigue quickly with repeated accommodative effort. So these patients are going to have blurred near vision after prolonged work. They are going to have asthenopia, they are going to have difficulty with minus lenses, and they are going to have reduced accommodative facility. And therefore, the diagnostic test will also be accommodative facility test in which these patients are going to experience fatigue with repeated cycles of near far focusing. And they will have problem with the PRA specifically. They will have decreased PRA wherein they are going to have problems with the minus lenses because minus lenses will stimulate accommodation and they cannot hold accommodation for long. So I would advise you again to visit our video on accommodative facility test if you do not understand the same. So how do you manage these? Here basically plus lenses again for near work. This is only to alleviate the patient's symptoms. Accommodative facility exercises like the lens rock, heart chart and the near far jumps. Now I explained to you what is meant by heart chart. Lens rock test, uh, lens rock exercises are also pretty similar. Here you are basically using flipper lenses, for example, plus two or minus two flipper. Or you can also use a separate plus or minus lenses. You give the patient a near chart at 40 centimeters and the patient alternately tries to focus on the letters on the chart using the plus lens on the flipper first and then the minus lens. And they keep on repeating the process for about one to two minutes at a steady pace. The goal over here is to increase the speed and the accuracy in shifting the focus between the lenses. And of course, you have to do the uh, visual hygiene, give the patient visual hygiene tips, tips, that is the frequent breaks and proper lightning condition. The whole idea here is to improve accommodative facility. Now, you might think what exactly is the difference between insufficiency and ill-sustained accommodation. The primary issue in accommodative insufficiency is low amplitude of accommodation right from the uh, start of near focus. Whereas in ill-sustained accommodation, the primary issue is not accommodative amplitude. They have normal accommodative amplitude initially, but this is going to fatigue over time with sustained near task. All right. The third one is the accommodative inertia. And this is also known as accommodative infacility. Here, the patient has a delay in changing focus between near and distance due to a slow accommodative response. That means the patients are basically going to experience a transitory blur as they, as they shift their focus from a near object to a far object or vice versa. 
how do you treat them again you correct any refractory uh, errors and also you have to prescribe them various accommodative facility improving exercises the last is the accommodative paralysis accommodative paralysis is a condition where the eye loses its ability totally to accommodate due to neurological pharmacological or pathological causes leading to difficulty in near vision so we all remember the accommodative pathway so what happens is the image is going to be formed on the retina goes to the optic nerve optic chiasm optic tract lateral geniculate body fine to the visual cortex and visual association area from here it reaches the superior colliculus and pretectal nucleus goes to the edingo vespal nucleus from there it goes to the third nerve the parathyroidic fibers are going to travel to the ciliary ganglion synapse in the ciliary ganglion and the post ganglionic fibers are going to reach through the short ciliary nerves to the ciliary muscle leading to accommodation so anywhere in the pathway there can be uh, some damage and that can cause paralysis of accommodation so let's see some of the common causes we could have congenital defect in which we could have absence or maldevelopment of the ciliary muscle cyclopedic drugs systemic drugs these can affect the uh, pupil and these can also affect the ciliary muscle degenerative conditions like parkinson disease uh, also can affect the parasympathetic control of accommodation poisons cranial nerve three lesions ocular diseases like anterior uveitis and glaucoma they can also impact the ciliary muscle function internal ophthalmoplegia can also affect the accommodation so in the end let's see how do we treat accommodative paralysis now if it is because of any drug drug induced paralysis like for example with with atropine or homatropine and even paralysis secondary to diphtheria often recovers spontaneously over time however you can give patients symptomatic relief using dark glasses uh, these could be required temporarily to reduce glare and photophobia associated with accommodative paralysis also optical correction can be given in the form of convex lenses that is plus lenses uh, basically prescribed to assist in near vision so we know that during near vision we are using accommodation and uh, accommodation increases the power of the eye this i explained to you in my video on what is accommodation so since they have lack of accommodation it is logical that we prescribe them convex lenses convex lenses it's pretty similar to what you do in presbyopia so in presbyopia also they have lack of accommodation or deficient accommodation and therefore we supplement that accommodation using the plus lenses now if your patient also needs glasses for distance you can give them the plus lenses in the form of bifocals or progressive lenses as well so those were four accommodative anomalies arising out of decreased accommodation if you like this video you might also like this video on accommodation thank you for watching have a nice day